Hi everyone, I'm Dave Giancola, joined again by Mike Trostel for another exciting U.S. Open Classic finish. The 2005 U.S. Women's Open was headlined by the great performances of the amateur golfers in the field. Both 17-year-old Morgan Pressel and 15-year-old Michelle Wee were tied atop the leaderboard through 54 holes at Cherry Hills, each trying to become the first amateur to win the title in nearly 40 years. But Dave, it was Mexico's Lorena Ochoa who made the biggest Sunday run, birdieing four of her first seven holes in the back nine to put pressure on Pressel, another amateur Brittany Lang, and South Korea's Birdie Kim. We join Ochoa on the 18th. As we get it back over to 18, this tee shot uh, over the water. Man. Get a lot of hauntings going through your head right here, I'll tell you that. Even though this fairway is 40 yards wide, it's actually the easiest hole uh, fairway on the course to hit, but you're still thinking about this H2O to the left. Very similar tee shot to where she hit it in the water at Phoenix in the playoff against Sonica Sorenstam. Hit this big old hook that never had a chance. Oh, oh, it's fat. Like it hit the ground first with a club, and that, it's in the water. That was just a colossal, I hate to use the word choke, but that's what that was. Probably hasn't done that since she was six years old. Look at the divot on the teen ground. I mean, she hit that. The tee, I think, is in the middle of that divot. That is really interesting. Watch this. Dressing on the neck of the club, takes it back, moves off the ball, broken left arm there, and just hits it. A uh, colossal chili dip, and uh, she will never forget that shot. You, you watch, if she would have parred this hole, if she would have parred this hole, she's got probably, she would have had a 75% chance of winning this championship. I really believe that. Well, the hardest thing is now she has to do it all over again from the same spot that is marked as a yellow regular water hazard. That's just something else. All right, before Ochoa hits seven. another one at seven, Gary. Yeah, birdie putt for Pressel and Wow. Well, she's just got the, the Roberto Duran hands of stone right now. Yeah. We go back to 18. And here's Ochoa, third now. I, I'm just flabbergasted by that. Uh, ever since we've been watching her on the back nine today, she's hit nothing but the center of the fairway. Her swing's been good. I'm telling you, I think oh, that gosh, deal. In, rough. That's dead right there. I think that deal in Phoenix was in the back of her mind. Similar, similar tee shot. That's brutal because that right there makes us a uh, par five for sure. She'll just have to hack it out and go in with a very difficult uphill 60 foot rise. Uh, fifth shot, I guess it is. To seven. This is Morgan Pressel for par. All right, nicely in. Uh, they're playing the other side. Karen Stupples made a bogey, so she drops to plus four. So Bertie Kim is hanging on to the lead through eight holes. One shot over Morgan Pressel. Lorena Ochoa with the troubles at 18. Ooh, it's going to be quite a final round of the 60th U.S. Women's Open Championship. There's Lorena Ochoa. Hard to keep your head up at this point. Out here in the western part of the United States, the Rockies looming in the background. 60th U.S. Women's Open Championship continues on this intriguing Sunday. Bertie Kim with a lead at the moment by one as we go out to 16. To a young lady who uh, certainly finds herself with a chance. This is Natalie Gulbus. She's at plus five. Right in the center of the fairway, her second shot here at the par four. Great drive, huh? Yeah, perfectly positioned, John. Nice down green lie to go into this tiny little green. Picks it off on Gary. The right one. Yeah, Get they like it. They like it. Good shot. Yeah, that'll funnel over toward the hole a little bit. And leaves her a very makeable putt. We go to the ninth and the second for Bertie Kim, Jane. And from a perfect side of the fairway on the left, only 173 to this whole location. It's on 11 today. Just a six iron. Yeah, I really want to try to keep it a little left of the hole. Leaves you an uphill putt. And that's where it's headed. All right, nicely done. The ninth has been the second most difficult hole on the course throughout this championship. As we go to eight. Morgan Pressel on the tee. 200 yard. Par three. 
It's windy on this hole uh, for some reason. It's like a little Ventura in that area. And, uh, not too bad there. Comes up a little short. Pressel tied for second. And over to 10, Angela Stanford for a birdie. And at her nine with a bogey and a double, but Stanford still clawing away. Second birdie around that bogey and double in the last four holes, so she moves it to plus six. And Ochoa, all she can do is chop out with a fourth shot a moment ago. Most difficult hole this week, Johnny. Only three birdies all week, and Ochoa paying the ultimate price here. And this is no easy shot, is it, uh, uh, from here going up that hill? Well, when she when she got up to that uh, shot in the rough, there was absolutely no no shot other than just sand wedging it out. And this is just an unbelievable debacle here at the last. Okay, how's her demeanor seem? She seems stunned. I have a hard time believing it could be anything but that at this point. You don't get that too many brass rings uh, in your hand teeing off at 18, and she had it. This from 151 yards. All locations sort of front left. Let's see the flag stick by the bunker. The shot going way to the right. And that's up in the stands. Get the well, I could say it's a ground rule double, but it should be lucky if she makes triple. Again, Ochoa with a three under round going before disaster at 18. Over the ninth a moment ago, Michelle Wee, long club out of this rough. Oh, wow. That was obviously a huge gamble. And a touch of inexperience, I yep, do believe, starting I to show, would Gary. Think so we we'll go over to the eighth. And a long birdie try for Karen Stupples, Roger. Yeah, at least every bit of 45 feet and coming off uh, what you could only describe as a very good bogey after uh, hitting her fourth shot from some 75 yards from the green and the tall primary rough got it up and in for five. First fairway she had missed. Now uh, this lengthy putt that will move to her left and be downhill slightly and then uh, maybe straighten up in the area of the cut, but uh, most of the break will be in the first half of the putt. A little slow putting this direction away from the setting sun, Roger. Oh, that's great speed. Stubble settling down a bit after three consecutive bogeys. It is a day to watch leaderboards because of all the changes out there and uh, Morgan Pressel told us earlier that's the kind of player she is. I look at every leaderboard that I can possibly find. If I'm on like the opposite hole I'll be looking over at like trying to squint to see the leaderboard. I, I don't know why I just I have to know exactly what's going on how everybody's playing you know whether someone's made a bogey or a birdie I mean I just like to know exactly what I have to do and um, whether I have to make a birdie or whether you know a par will do. And Roger, I know you just saw her uh, checking out one of those boards. Very hard. She stood at the leaderboard at seven twice. She may want to check it out in a moment when Ochoa's number at 18 is posted. Well, it's just so unlike a 17-year-old. Most of their sports psychologists would tell them never to look at a leaderboard, and she seeks them out. She's a little different type of player. I mean, in all in this age of all these young players going to academies, I mean, obviously she's played the game from a young age, but. Uh, She's definitely her own person. Well, she's a bit of an extrovert type A, and a type A wants to be in control, and they want to know what's going on. 16. Birdie putt for Golbus down the hill. Turning a little left. Will it stay up? We go to the ninth. Birdie Kim has a lengthy putt for Birdie. And straight uphill, it's going to be very slow putt against the wind as well. Looks to me like it may want to go a little right to left at the end. Speed the key.
about this one. Good putt. So Bernie Kim will make the turn at even par. Two over for the championship. Very steady play as we go out to eight. For her par, Morgan Pressel. Yeah. Remains at plus three, one behind. Again, trying to become the youngest major champion in the history of this game. It is heady, heady stuff where Pressel is trying to get to. And as uh, Ochoa drops here in front of the stands at 18, we bring in David Fay for an explanation here. Well, that's a temporary immovable obstruction. And so the relief can be more generous. And she actually had an option. Uh, because we also have a ball drop over there and she was going back and forth trying to determine whether to take relief under the rule or to go with the ball drop and the official there, Sue May, who officiated the open. She's going through it with her. It'll be the sixth shot upcoming for Ocho at 18-9. That's the bogey putt of Michelle Wee. And Can't it is make a all putt. coming apart, Johnny. Just cannot make a putt at all. It just... That is a seven over par, 42. Well, Sundays at the open, it's like putting to an anthill with a thimble on the top. Well, the fairways look like they're about single file, too, yeah. and she's paying the price for both. That's why whenever you can see someone finish off the last round, really, in an open uh, strongly, like Michael Campbell did last week, you got to really congratulate him because there's a lot of things that go on in your head, and uh, uh, it's very special to see somebody break par the last day. By the way, congratulations on 73. That yeah, thanks. that was a pretty good close. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Yes, thanks. <laughs> All right. So Ochoa with her sixth shot here at this par four, and this is one slick, tilted green K. Oh, you could say that again. Uh, she's dropped, has a decent lie, uh, but green is sloping away. She has a lot of green to work with, but just has to get it landed onto the green surface. Breaks a lot to the left at the end. Hit very softly. That's why that sure did. Yeah, really checked up. That was not a good bounce. Popped straight up. It didn't bounce forward like it's supposed to. That's that's a shame. There, she had a better shot than it turned out. She has that for a triple bogey seven. As we go to Morgan Pressel at the ninth most difficult fairway on the course to hit. Players just hitting it 55 percent of the time, but I would say by that reaction she likes it. And she should. Gary, I think this is one of the hardest throws to hit I've ever played in my life. Yeah, it's, a, it's a crown. It's got a big roll off both directions. From the center left uh, side, there's a big mound and everything goes both ways, like the top of your head. Birdie Kim on the tee at the par 4 tenth, 414 yards. Leader by one over Ochoa and Pressel. Ochoa's going to drop a lot at 18. This Winded her back. Definite birdie hole if she can hit the fairway. And that might be, is that going right? This is headed right, Johnny. Looked like she wiped it again. And that's not good. That's an easy hole location. The ball, the pin is back left right where it wants to end up. I could see somebody coming very close uh, for almost a gimme birdie with a good iron shot on 10. So Lorena Ochoa for a triple bogey seven. She has uh, already put in the books one of the greatest careers in collegiate history. And we mentioned that she's the rookie of the year. Lots and lots of game, Dottie. But I can't forget what you said at the before this championship began, if she is able to control a driver that gets a little loose at times, she'll be okay. Does it gets a little long as we saw on that replay and the quick hook is easy to hit. This putt moves a little left at the hole and she does not play for it. She played it to be a straight putt. Miss red 17, miss red 18. Oh, what a finish. Quadruple bogey eight. Drops four shots at the last hole after getting within one of the lead, 72. And now she posts plus seven. Going so well for Lorena Ochoa. Until that final tee shot at 18. So it's Birdie Kim in the lead by one over Pressel. And Ochoa's tough 18th has brought a lot more players into this championship. One she'll think about for a long, long time. And 
welcome back to the 60th U.S. Women's Open Championship. We're at number nine, Karen Stuffles in the left-hand rough. Well, in, the, in the primary rough, Gary, and has 167 left of the hole now. She doesn't have a wedge out, but I don't believe she can get to the green here, and I don't think she can hack it more than maybe 100, 100 yards up the fairway. Well, we can see the ball. That's, the, that's new. I haven't seen anybody hit more than eight iron out of this rough with any success this week. Well, she did. She got it up by the green. That was a little better lie than normal. Well, this one's not. Head to no. 10. Got some green to work with, though. Birdie Kim's uh, second after missing this uh, fairway at 10. And she's on the down slope in the primary rough, just over this fairway bunker. Has 143 to the front, 164 all the way to the flag. From this point, it is all downhill. She's got a decent lie, but it's not the worst lie. I don't think she can get it all the way to the hole. You can run it in, but you don't want to push it or something into the rough and have that 30-yard shot out of the primary cut. Exactly. You just don't, you just can't afford to get greedy out of this, Johnny. It's, well, well, maybe she can gear up, play it back in her stance, and just hit it as hard as she can swing. Looks like an eight on. And you're going to play it way back in your stance. Almost play for a little bit of a pull. Pull shot gives you more power. First fairway she's missed all day. Sounded pretty clean there. Came out of there pretty well, but it is going left in the front uh, green side bunker. Well, it's not the worst spot in the world. Leader has problems at the 10th as we go to nine. Morgan Pressel second from 158 yards up the hill. Only hit two of the first eight greens. Set. Set. Oh, how about that? Oh, that's beautifully done, Johnny. That is yeah. right where you want to leave it. Leaves you got the uphill putt. You got to know a four is almost a half birdie on this hole. Four and 18 on on nine and 18. That's a great score. Over at 16, Monica Sorenstam for par. Drove it in the rough. Third shot to there. That has kind of been the story. The putter has been ice cold. She's not hitting too many uh, close ones for birdie either. There have been a lot of 30 footers for par. You don't think Sorenstam's kind of kicking herself, Gary, with these leaders uh, not doing much? No, uh, no question about that. It, 10 over par, she <laughs> has got to think what might have been. Sure a lot of pressure though going for that third leg of the Grand Slam. And some pressure going for that slam. Wimbledon coverage continues tomorrow at 10 a.m. in all time zones. Championships of Wimbledon. <laughs> Andy Roddick still alive over there. Maria Sharapova, the defending women's champion. All the stars of tennis in action and here the way the women stack up right now in their greatest championship. Kim, who is not on the green over the 10th hole, leading by one. And you can see Lang and Golbus at uh, plus five with the chance if they finish strongly to, who knows, maybe get in a playoff. See Lori Kane sitting in the clubhouse at plus six. That's not such a bad place to be either. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> Only two rounds under par. You mentioned Kane had a 69 and Golbus the round going now at one under. And there's Annika at that uh, plus 10 mark. And we talked about Annika, or I did, uh, not hitting it that well. She just hit uh, uh, six out of, five out of 16 greens. So it's a bit of a struggle. Bit of a struggle for we over at the 10th. Now we're third to this par four. Sprayed another drive off to the right. Had no shot but to chip out. Now has 92 yards to this hole located in the back left of the green. Easy hole location. Indeed, everything feeds right down there, John. Beautiful swing, huh, Jane? Oh, that was hit beautifully. Got to get up. To nine. Karen Stupple's third. Oof, boy, look, listen to the sound of that. Mm. So hard to get the club through that wiry grass. You almost got to try to hit it like 12 feet past, Gary. That, that's the visual you have to have, Johnny. You're right. We move over to 17. Natalie Gulbus has laid up. Johnny uh, got it in the center of the fairway, but uh, boy, I'm, I'm amazed she laid up this far down. Well, she's in a great spot. She could finish 4-4, maybe have a what, 30, 40% chance to get in a playoff, Gary. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that, John. That, uh, she could post four over par. That would be awfully good. I'll tell you, five over is not out of the questions either. It's only three players ahead of her. Quickly do 11. This is the third for Young Joe at the par five. Plus three round going for her, plus five for the championship. And that one gets away for the 21-year-old 
rookie out of South Korea. 20 players from Korea began this championship. 17. Golbus is third. Hole cut just about 20 feet over the water. Well, that's a delicate shot. And you got the nerves going, Gary? Uh, you got to look for this to be past the hole. Yep, pretty much what you'd expect. And that leaves that tough putt to Reed coming down the hill. With the ninth, Morgan Pressel, uphill birdie putt. This one's tough to get to the hole. Line's She's good if it's firm enough. <laughs> she hasn't left too many short today, but mm, you were right, Gary. To the tenth. Third for birdie cam at the par four from this bunker. This sand in these bunkers has got a beautiful brownish uh, sort of southwest flavor to it. And it's fairly easy to spin the ball out of these bunkers and they really won't plug. Kim will have good that shot. to stay in the lead by one as we go back to nine. Good crowds here, uh, Gary, all week. A record they counted, the USGA announcing yesterday. And 30,000. Yeah, I expected to be over 30,000 today. I was speaking with Betsy Hamilton and uh, tournament director. She was saying that uh, they were looking for more than 30,000, a new single day record. As we look at Karen Stuffles with her putt for par. And obviously uphill, breaking right this putt. The lie she had by the edge of the green here was just dreadful. Speed. So Stuffles will record her fourth bogey in her last five holes. She drops the five over for the championship. Well, they love their golf here in the Denver, Colorado area. And at Cherry Hills, it's been a great history. Select few there to host all three USGA Opens, Wingfoot and Hazeltine, Minnesota, the only other two to match Cherry Hills. And down at the ninth green, Morgan Pressel, four par, and it really has been this club, even though she struggled a little bit with her speed today, Roger, that has kept her in this thing, she's second in the field in the putting stats. And she missed one about this length on the third. Okay. I just got in the edge. <laughs> Safely in. So she remains at three over par, one off the lead. We go to 17 in the birdie putt for Natalie Golbus. Straight in, Gary. That's the one that most players feel like it should move to the right, and it just won't do it. Oh, good speed, though. Yeah. Golbus has yet to win on the LPGA Tour. This would be some story if... This were her first victory as we go to 10. For her par, Birdie Kim to stay in the lead by one. That's a misread because it looks like it's going to break left, but the fall of the land going down to the creek is to the right. The creek is on this direction over here. And so any green that breaks from front to back is very hard to figure. So another drop shot here by the leader. And again, that moves everybody playing ahead a little bit closer. Gulbis. The plus five, and now Kim is tied with Pressel, who has made the turn just behind her. What's going to happen at Story Cherry Hills Country Club today? 60th U.S. Women's Open, tied at the top at the moment. This was a moment ago. 18-year-old Paula Creamer, who had those doubles at one and five to fade quickly, then another bogey at nine out of four, but then a birdie there at 11, and there's hope at plus six. Just trying to psych that putter up. Yeah, there's some birdie holes on the back nine, so, you know, anything can happen right now, but what a big tee shot for Natalie Golbus. Well, not only a big tee shot, but her dad said this was a big year for her. He kind of issued a, okay, Natalie, let's wake up at the beginning of the year and said, what would you like to do? Are you content being a top, excuse me, a top 40 player? Or are you going to do something to get in that top 10? Teeing up real high here with the driver. Now she had her best finish in a major at the LPGA Championship earlier this month. They like it. Having a terrific year. Natalie learned the game from her father 
John Dowdy, retired juvenile probation officer, a character in his own right who has literally been shadowing Natalie's uh, career, very much involved in it. She has a reality series That'd be a pretty coming way, up on the Golf Channel. Pretty good way to kick off the reality show of <laughs> yeah. the win at the Women's Open. <laughs> That's right. 17, Gary. Yes, yeah, a moment ago, Annika Sorenstam going for the green in two. At the par five. Didn't Ooh. sound like she struck it too well. No, it looks like it's leaking right. She's yelling four. She better hope it gets to the gallery. So that will kind of sink any chance that Annika might have had. What a great year she's had, though. Oh, I mean, incredible just fantastic. Play. Yeah. Just dominated. No one's won the first three legs of the women's modern Grand Slam. That's what Annika was shooting at. And then, of course, ultimately the four for four. And Ochoa right there at plus seven is with Kay Cockrell. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Lorena, you made the turn, four birdies, got yourself in position at plus three for the championship on the 18th tee. What, what went wrong with that tee shot? I think just probably the club selection. I, I hit a three boot and was, you know, under a lot of pressure and I'm just trying to make an easy swing and I get too quick with my hands and make a, a hook you know, to the water. You'd been hitting your three wood really well and mm -hmm. your driver all day. Did mm -hmm. you just get a little ahead of yourself maybe? Well, I think it was downwind. The, the fairs are getting harder, and yesterday we had three wood and it was really close to, to go down to the water. And just like you said, I was hearing it good, so we didn't you know, hesitate. Just grab the three wood and trying to make a good swing. But at the same time, I knew I needed to hit an easy one. If there would be too much going you know, downwind, just make an easy swing, and my hands you know, got me. Johnny Miller said if you could par 18, you'd have a 75% chance, he felt, of your winning the championship. How devastating is this for you? Well, I think it's, it's hard to realize right now, you know, I just get it, give it away, the tournament. I, I fought so hard for 71 holes and just the last one, uh, you know, I have, I have nothing to say. I'm just, I feel really, you know, sad and, and it's the way golf is. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. You're a champ. Thank you. Dan. Lorena Ochoa, one of the most sincere, well-liked players on tour. It is, uh, it was tough to watch. Well, especially after last week, birdie in what six out of the last seven holes, and or, or five, five out of seven. Six, five out of seven. That was Pressel from the edge of that rough at the tenth, trying to chase this ball in there. Hit. This needs to stop. Well, she made the proper play, though, don't you, Roger? Well, I think it was a very creative play, being right on the edge of the intermediate oh, primary oh, rough, but uh, oh. still got through the green. Yep, it's on the upslope there, and the ball seems to be sitting up, so not pretty, too bad. Pretty good rule of thumb, though, when you you do not want to go over greens uh, in any tournament, and especially in an open with tough rough normally. But this green does not have, as I said earlier, does not have the back to front tilt, so it's not a bad spot. We'll keep it here for Stupples, Raj. Only 95 yards left to the hole. This is when she's got to attack right here. Land the ball short of the hole and right of the hole. Let it bounce. Let it take the slope to the hole. Nice drive on Roger. Oh, yeah, this one was pounded. Stupples reeling with four bogeys in the last five holes, which closed out her opening nine. She's got to be thinking green lighter here. Our caddy Bobby Inman lined her up just right of the hole, I would imagine. This one needs one. to get down a little bit, I think. Is that just adrenaline, Roger? Look at those balls right next to each other. Just, you know, that's no no call for that to be going over the green with a green lighter there from that distance. That's that's just adrenaline, I guess. Stupples just three of ten in greens in regulation, and this is Brittany Lang, the 19-year-old All-American out of Duke, second at the par three, 15th, plus five. She's a player. She is a real player. She went on to make that putt. And she's in great shape to win this yep, championship. She's got three holes left and is at plus five. Lang was a part of the four-way tie for the lead after the opening round on Thursday with a 69. Another reminder, the Pepsi 400 live from Daytona comes your way next Saturday night in prime time at 7 o'clock Eastern. You know, the players are so good nowadays, Dottie. Only one time in the last 20 women's open uh, has uh, an over par score one after 72 holes. That was uh, in 1998, Sari Pak, if you remember, against Jenny Shishirporn. She won with six over par, and we're going to have a similar thing here with this difficult golf course and tough rough. Over at 17, Annika Soren stams fourth. After she hit the ball in the water, took her drop. 
with virtually no chance from there, did she? No, Gary? not at all. Not at all. At 18. A moment ago, this was Karini Shea. She was a part of that four way tie for the lead uh, through Thursday. Delicate downhill slicer. Shea with a solid round going today, and that is a bogey, and it's going to be a plus seven. Posting for Ishe. And over at the tenth, those balls right next to each other, Roger, Stupples and Pressel. They are, and first to play will be uh, Pressel. Not and too bad, is it, Roger? It's not terrible, John. It has a decent lie. No, enough green to stop it without hitting it short of the green, right? I believe they could land it on the green and get it near the hole, yeah. She doesn't seem to have a soft little uh, wedge shot that I've seen yet. Uh, it's more of a standard little one-two swing, one-two like that. There's no uh, open up lob shot or play it forward with the hands back and flip it up in the air. Just sort of a standard shot that Annika played all those years. Really wasn't too creative, but she's Annika's learned a lot of new shots. But this is well forward with a face open. Well, Morgan does have the shot, Johnny. I went down and watched her in February, and she was spending a great deal of time working on that. I just haven't seen it yet this week. That's all. Well, I'm I still sure haven't has. seen it. Yeah, <laughs> that's underneath that seen one. It. You've seen it. I haven't. <laughs> Over at 11, the par five, third shot for Birdie Kim. Easiest hole on the golf course right here. Hits a downslope and will chase right on the green. That's a good one. Drove it in the left rough, so giving herself a chance for Birdie. That'd be quite Kim up and in. Has. <laughs> Back to Stupples at the tenth, Raj. Virtually the same shot. Don't want to. Why not quite as good? See how she's soling it real deeply in the grass. You shouldn't do that. But she muscles it out. And over to 18, Golbus at plus five. Hardest Stop. shot on the golf course Stop. right here to Stop. hit the green. She's asking for it to go. Oh, it skids into the bunker, which at times is a lot better than that rough. I yeah. think it went into the bunker. Yeah, it's a shame she blocked that. Well, it's not a, not a hard shot. She can do this deal. Most difficult holes in the women's open this since 99. Number 18 right at the top of the list. And back over at 17. And the lengthy par putt for Annika Sorenstam. Across the green, moving to her right. So she will drop another shot to plus 11 for the championship, which is five over par in her final round. So we go back to 10. Morgan Pressel, number one ranked junior, number one ranked female amateur in the country. On a winning streak of sorts here too. She's won four of her last five AG, AJGA events. She's got a summer full of those still on her, on her plate. And how about yeah. that for Paul? One thing she won't ever do is quit. That was a heck of an up and in, Roger. I think that was really big, Jenny, certainly for her confidence. Yeah, it loosened her right up. She wants to have fun. She's fiery, but she likes to have fun, too. Yep. Morgan cried after a double bogey in the eighth hole early in the, the first round of this championship. And I got a feeling we'll see tears win or lose today from her. That's the kind of player she is at 12. That is the uphill birdie putt for young Joe. Trying to get it to four over par. Pretty good tournament for this rookie, don't you think, yeah, Gary? Yeah, absolutely. He just made five cuts so far this year on the LPGA Tour. One top 10 finish. As we move to 16, we're 19-year-old Brittany Lang has this second shot from the center of the fairway. Well, not going to be an amateur much longer. She will turn pro and enter the qualifying school. Had a terrific NCAA championship where she finished tied for third individually. And of course, the Duke women won the event. And she certainly still has a chance. Oh, she's, she's got a great chance. She knows how to win, has won six times collegiately, three in her freshman year, three in her sophomore year. Number one in greens of regulation. Beautiful golf swing. She's one of the few players in this field that hits a high fade, Gary. Yeah. And that's usually in a U.S. Open. What does that equate to? Uh, good things. <laughs> She'll have a quick downhill putt from there. 
Back to 10. Can Stupple save her par? Like Pressel, yes! Stupple's remains at plus five. Two back. And this is a birdie try for Birdie Kim. Well, this was an impressive shot uh, from 221 yards with a five wood to this point. It's about eight or nine feet uphill. Should swing a little bit from right to left. The creek is to her left. This would be a heck of a birdie. Well, especially considering she played all year on tour last year and only made 62 birdies. Birdie's the word of the day right now, as in Kim. Beautiful to get the plus two. Now, Golba's coming out of the bunker at 18 with her third. Most important bunker shot of her life. Played that out to the right for the big break, but did not hit it hard enough. But it is creeping down the hill. Yes, it is. And she's got a chance to post plus five. Right now, Lori Kane is the leader in the clubhouse at plus six. Golbus could change that in just a few moments from now with a clutch par save from the bunker at 18. Birdie Kim is the leader with her latest birdie back after this. You see Golbus there at plus five as she looks over this par putt at 18, eighth on the money list. And I guess you could see a good performance like this coming, Dottie. Five top tens already this year, most she's ever had and already with nearly $400,000 won, already a career high in earnings. Well, she says she's ready to win. This would certainly be one big time win. Plus five would look a lot better than plus six, that's for sure. This is a right to left putt. Um, Got to have perfect line and speed. Couple, three inches outside of right. She hit a terrific putt exactly where she wanted and just misread it. That was a really good putt. It looked like it would have break more than that. That's a shame when you hit it that, that perfectly, Dottie. Well, she did hit a very, very good putt. So one of the tour's most popular players with a final round 71 plus six. Tyne came to the lead in the clubhouse as we go back to the par three 12th. And today the hole Measuring 183 yards, hole cut in the back right portion of the green. And Gary, the wind has started to pick up here all of a sudden from uh, behind the players and a little bit right to left as well. We've got 164 to the front. I believe with the altitude, she can get a seven iron to the front. It should skip on. This green very firm. You certainly don't want to carry it all the way back to the hole. It's a pretty good looking swing, Gary. Yeah, that rhythm was beautiful, John. And she lands it in a good spot. That should stay. In fact, that should come back a little bit. Yeah. Hard to believe that swing only made ten thousand dollars last week or last year, isn't it, Gary? Yeah, well, she's doing a little better this year. She's made sixty-nine thousand. Already has a top ten finish, so she's getting better. Shall we next to play and uh, finally a birdie? Shall we back at the par five eleventh? So she's at plus eight. First birdie in 17 holes for her, Gary. That's amazing. Yeah, she two putted uh, just from the front of the green, had uh, a downhill five footer for birdie, and raised her arms in joy. Been very frustrated today. This no more than an eight iron for Michelle. That should be good. That should be good. That'll come back a little as well. So, um, both Lee and Kim will have nice putts at birdie. And we go to the 16th. Brittany Lang. Trying to roll it over this slope and then down to the hole. Should be picking up speed. Tough putt, aren't you? Yeah, it is, John. That's very, a very difficult. Tough spot to go. That's a pretty straight putt coming back, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. Not much break from there. Up at 18. Rosie Jones coming home here. Might as 
said excuse me Johnny that this is going to be her final season but I couldn't help but read in her diary in the local newspaper today that she left the opportunity open to maybe playing a couple of majors next year. Did one of those Jack Nicholas back paddles. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, tough to leave the game daddy when you're playing as well as Rosie has been playing. And now Stupples going for it, Roger, at the par 5 11th. Now she's got a wood out, 264 yards to the hole, and the wind has really picked up in the last 10 minutes. Well, she looks that over. We go back over to the tough finishing hole, and Annika. Left can't. herself a long second shot, huh, Dottie? Well, I can't help but think that choices off these tees have really been a, a very, very overlooked conservative play for her this week. She's left herself way back on a bunch of holes and then hasn't driven it in the fairway very often. Only hit five greens in regulation today. Can you believe that, Annika Sorenstown? Got to put it the fairway first. I mean, that is, that's a shocking right there. Look at the few players going for first three majors of the year and how they fared in that third attempt. Remember Arnold Palmer? Won the 1960 U.S. Open to make it to two in a row. Not sure what she was celebrating with her caddy there, but it's been a great year, no doubt about that. All right, this was Stubble second at a par 5 11th a moment ago. Be right, baby. Get on back in there. Well, Bobby certainly likes it. Takes a hop, and it's in pretty good shape right there on the short fringe. Might be a birdie for Stubble. She needs one. She's at plus five. Birdie Kim from South Korea. Young Joe also up there from South Korea. Moreno Choa from Mexico fell back to plus seven with a tough 18th today. And welcome back with the par 312. Birdie Kim, downhill birdie putt, chance to increase the lead. Break right to left early and then flatten out at the hole. Quite a bit of speed, too. Trickles on by. Back at 11. At the par 5, third for Morgan Pressel, one behind Birdie Kim. She's birdied this hole in every round thus far. Set. Set. This is going to have another chance here. That's not a hard putt, just a little left to righter. 16. This just a moment ago, Dan Brittany Lang for par. And pretty much straight up the hill, right into the heart of the hole. Confident stroke for the 19 year old amateur. How about a couple of amateurs up there, Gary? Only one amateur has ever won this championship. Catherine Lacoste back in 1967. And Monica Sorenstein making her way up to the 18th green just a moment ago. Applying herself. She had a lot of. Plotting the fans, I should say, she had a lot of support here this week as she went for the third leg of this Grand Slam. It's going to come up short, but uh, not too many players get themselves in that position. This is just a moment ago at 12. Michelle Wee for par. And it is just one of those days, Johnny. It is. It's just a shocker for her. Yep, and now live, Bertie Kim. And Gary, tough to putt after you've seen a playing partner miss one from a very similar spot. Uh, Got to keep the speed up. Ball will turn to the left. Okay, nicely done. Gotcha. She will walk off the par three. Still one shot ahead. We'll go back to 11. Third for Stepples, Roger. And chipping from just off the shortest fringe. Quite a, this about 35 feet, not much break here. Quite a bit of loft for this shot, right? It is, I would think she'd want to get it on the ground early and just get it to roll, John. It's like a wedge. She did have it back pretty far in her stance, but. But that's what a wedge will give you if you don't watch out. You decel a little on Roger, and with that wedge, you just it's not going to climb up that hill. Yeah, I agree with the big problems with the club selection there. I just don't know why she would use a wedge. There was no need. Well, if she doesn't birdie this hole, that's a, just a giveaway of a shot. Over at 13, Young Joe for par is to remain at plus five. Another one of those players from South Korea in the championship hunt here. Rookie on the LPGA Tour, earned her card by finishing tied for second at Q School. It was her first attempt at the school. 
And now we're at 11 as Morgan Pressel has a birdie chance. Well, let's put from just inside 15 feet downhill and breaking right and everything's got to do with the speed here. Johnny, I mean, if this will break pretty hard if she hits it a little too easy. Well, when you're 17 years old, your eyes get big with this length birdie putt. Well, it really breaks, just like you said, Roger. Party wants to hit it good and firm, huh, Roger? But the other party says, just cozy it up there. 13 T. 384 yard par four. The leader birdie Kim at plus two. And wind helping in from the player's right. She hits the fairway. This is a really a birdie hole at the front right hole location. Well, she just made a birdie hole into what could be potentially a pretty difficult par or worse. Well, she's got to cross the creek and the bottom line is that's a a huge error of all the fairways to miss besides 18. This is another one of the fairways you do not want to miss. It's like 16. You got to cross the creek. And over at the par 5, 11 stopples for a birdie. Well, this putt doesn't do much from here. It's uphill slow, but to be aggressive with and she's really pretty much got to have it. She can't let this opportunity get away. Think of the players that are in contention right now. This might be the least rattled. She's done this. Mm. Ouch, Roger. That's giving one away there, John. So it'll be a par five for Stupple. She remains at plus five, three behind Kim. Stupples, who maintains a couple of residences in Orlando and over in England, turned 32 on Friday. This is 45-year-old Rosie Jones for Bunky at the finishing hole. She can putt, huh? 75 for Rosie, plus 10 for the championship. And Sorenstam, this is rare territory for Sorenstam, this far behind in any kind of tournament. Last time she finished out of the top 20, she missed the cut at the Women's British Open in 02. That was nearly three years ago. So Sorenstam coming up short, once again thanking the crowd for all their support. A tie for 26th right now, Sorenstam. Again, a rare, rare position for her. Yeah, the last three US Open, she's finished second, fourth, and second. So. She could have won all three of those, by the way, if she would have putted just pretty good. She's really struggled with her putting the last four opens. This was a moment ago at 11. Pressel for par. Slips it in. Remains at plus three. Closest to the leader, Birdie Kim. Next Saturday, it's AVP Volleyball coming back to NBC at the Cincinnati Open. In action, the Golden Girls of Athens. Remember Misty May and Carrie Walsh? They'll be out there. Cincinnati Open, part of the AVP Nissan Series next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Time, 1.30 Pacific. So as you look at the board with Kim leading Pressel by a shot, we head out to the 12th. And again, the par three, 183 yards today with the hole cut in the back right portion of the green. Just five birdies recorded here all day. Water's not in play at all, right, Gary? No, it really isn't, Johnny. I mean, you'd have to miss hit a shot uh, completely to uh, to really bring that into play. And you've got a bank in front of the green that's about five feet uh, high that the rough is really long. So even if you were to miss hit it slightly and carry it short of the green, it would not come back in the water. Green has definitely started to firm up, though, hasn't it, Gary? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's very firm. You don't want to carry it much past the front of the green. What a we... big shot this is, Gary, right, right now uh, with the cross creek down there. You can see Jane, that cross creek there. Uh, what's she going to do? Well, she has no prayer but to lay up. Uh, this lie is one of the worst I've seen. It's settled right down in this really thick primary rough. With that front hole occasion, you want to lay it back a little so she can spin a wedge. You don't want to get down too close. And that's maybe closer than she should have hit it, but I, I'm not sure from here. So the obligatory chop out for Kim. And we go back to 12. And Morgan Pressel on the tee, Roger. She is. 
these girls have to start hitting some greens. Both of the players only hit four on the first 11 greens, so gotta get some better iron play going. It's a five iron here. Very good. She likes sit. it. Yeah, it's got to sit. That green is very oh firm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was too much club, wasn't it, Gary? Yeah, I think so, John. I mean, if you you really have to play to the front yard, and you're just past the front yard, and you can't carry that ball all the way to the hole. Russell a little pumped. Well, well, the hole's now playing downwind, and as you can see, the green is really firm. You can start to see some of that uh, brownish hue to it, John, that yep. we see so often in major championships. Well, Morgan Pressel's uh, caddy, uh, Sam Hinshaw, that's her job to, you know, sort of feel the adrenaline and try to give her the right club. and. Uh, that's a couple 10 in this hole, uh, 12, that uh, she has misclubbed her. All right, Stupples now with a seven iron, Roger. Well, this hole can't be playing much more if you factor everything into it, uh, much more than about 155 or 60 yards. Is that right? Kick this ball is right. Kick now. It's not hooking as much as she'd Kick. like. Might get a bounce. Nope, doesn't do it. Very rough Thanks. swallows it up. Short-sighted miss. Big, no, big mistake. Nothing comes easy, does it, at, on the U.S. Open that last day, Gary? No, certainly doesn't, John. And when you get a little aggressive, if you don't pull it off, it can really be a problem. Well, the struggle continues at the 60th U.S. Women's Open. We'll be right back. Just a moment ago at the 17th, Brittany Lang third shot here at the par five. Hole cut just 20 feet over the water. Oh, wow. Oh. Carried it by about two feet. And what does that take some it? guts? Yes, it does. Wow, what a shot. Over 13. Third shot for the leader. To the par four. Oh, terrific motion with that shot. Leaves yourself a nice little putt there. Not too hard to make from there. And back to 17. Brittany Lang with uh, Johnny. I guess you'd have to call one of the biggest putts he's ever had. That was one of the best shots you'll ever see, folks. I'm telling you, for her to be able to dial down with all that adrenaline, she knows, I'm sure, that if she can make birdie here in par 18, she's got a great chance to win this uh, championship. So we'll see if she can make that great stroke she did on the last hole on the short one, Gary. It was just perfect tempo. The second round, when she, the only round where she struggled at all on the greens, we saw her pull a couple of short putts, Johnny. Got that Payne Stewart putter. Mm -hmm. Hands back. Not that one. Confidently stroked. So Brittany Lang goes to the 18th tee at plus four for the championship. Man. We'll move over to the 12th. Morgan Pressel second from behind the green. Yeah, we'll her green running away from her. That's a little better than we saw back there at the 10th hole. It was a perfect chunk wide. You just chunk it out and let it run down. Let's join Kay Cockrell. Thank you very much. Uh, Annika, the, this uh, week is in the books. You came up a little short on your bid to get that third grand slam. But what has this whole experience, this whole week been like for you? Well, I've actually had a good time. Um, obviously, I'm very disappointed about uh, my results and uh, kind of the way it ended. But, uh, you know, the crowd has been spectacular this week. I mean, I thought the golf course was a lot of fun to play. It's a great challenge. So, you know, put my golf aside. It's been a great week. Well, you struggled a bit today. We're seeing a lot of the leaders struggling. Why is this golf course playing so tough today? Well, me personally, I mean, I was, uh, my game plan was to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, I started with hitting a few more drivers and then just put me in a lot of trouble. And after that, I just couldn't recover. So it's just a hard day for me. Is there anything that you would have done differently at the beginning of the week or even last week as you prepared for this week? Uh, at the moment, not really. Um, I thought I came into this week as prepared as I could be. I thought uh, I was as focused as I could be. I felt really good about this week. Uh, it's just one of those weeks um, I did not feel the momentum. I didn't have any flow. Um, hit a few bad shots and I just could never recover. And I definitely didn't make enough birdies uh, to have a chance. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Dan, back up to you. Thank you, Kay. So 
Annika's quest toward history is going to come up short, but you know she'll gather herself for the ladies' final major of the year, the Women's British Open. She will play next week in the match play, and then she's going to head over to Europe with a couple of weeks to prepare for the Avion Masters and also the British. Now to the 12th. Morgan Pressel has this putt left for par. Her playing competitor, Karen Stupples, was unable to get the ball up and down from the rough on the right-hand side of the green, so she drops to six over. Let's go. I'm going to break to the left hand. Now firmly stroked right into the back of the hole. Morgan Pressel remains at three over for the championship. And one off the lead. She's got a little of that strut back yeah, that Roger was talking about. Spring. Well, this is kind of an eerie feeling that uh, is reminiscent of seven years ago. Remember the other Duke amateur, Jenny Shasiraporn, who sank that long putt on the 72nd hole to get into a playoff with Sari Pak in the tough conditions again here, Dottie and Johnny. Sari winning that championship over Jenny at plus six is what they posted before the 18-hole playoff. But here is uh, Brittany Lang maybe the forgotten amateur with all this hubbub of between Michelle Wee and Morgan Pressel and again the best amateur finishes Catherine Lacoste the only amateur to win it and that was back in 1967 and if Lang is able to hang on she would be the youngest women's open champion in history I can't think help but think that her preparation this year was aided by the fact that she did play Kraft Nabisco narrowish sort of fairways very very thick rough firm greens and then she did play in Corning on a sponsor exemption last month tied for 15th four rounds under par in a row got some well, playing time while she waits par 13 for Birdie Kim well you couldn't ask to be in a better position to uh, make this putt uphill a little bit of right to left so about 10 feet we'll see how our nerves are at this stage in the championship made the great birdie a couple holes ago. Birdie Kim. Trying to become just the 17th player to make the women's open their first win. And Lang has been waiting quite a while before sending this ball over the water here. Are you surprised she's going with like a rescue club, uh, Dottie? Well, Johnny, she is pretty long. Fairways are firming up. Anything in the right half of this fairway will find its way down. And yesterday were a couple of shots that went through the fairway into the hazard. She's the best player in the field right now. She's hit the most greens in regulation. She's already hit 11 today. Uh, she's one of the few leaders that averages over 260 yards off the tee. And right now, the best player that's playing the best this week is uh, got a chance to win this thing with a par here. Best number posted so far, plus six. How will Brittany Lang handle the pressure of their most prized championship? There more dookie magic here at Cherry Hills after Jenny Shasiraporn sank that unlikely putt on the 72nd hole to get into a playoff with Sayri Pak, who right now is the youngest to ever win this championship. But if Brittany Lang can get it done, she would take over that spot. 19-year-old All-American out of Duke. And over at 14, the leader a moment ago. Cut across it. Uh, she was lined up right for starters. And we're being told that it is inbounds by a foot. And Birdie Kim is waiting back on the tee to get official word of her own. And now she's heading down. Well, she pulled it on the last hole and uh, pushed it there. And uh, she's not sure if it's inbounds here. She's waiting. It is inbounds by 9.75 inches. That was pretty exact, okay? Or Jane? 
Look at this. Yeah, she's she so will happy. have uh, Look at, the, she's the so fence happy. impinging her backswing. And with a little luck, she might do a Seve Ballesteros. So it might be over there where people have been walking. I don't know what the lie's like. You're right there, Jane. Is it uh, in heavy grass or tromped down grass? Well, let's go to 13. And this is Stupples and her second rider to the par four. This is from 133. Shot the place downhill and downwind slightly today. A little more like those shots we saw from her yesterday when she made six in a row in this area of the golf course, six birdies. But six bogeys for Stupples so far today, plus five on her round, plus six, four behind. Birdie Kim, who's just in bounds over at 14. And we'll keep it right here for Pressel, who's just one behind. Looking at her lie, Roger. Well, it's just off the edge of the fairway, just uh, up by the primary rough cut, but it, it shouldn't be too bad. It might be, have a little difficulty getting the ball to spin, however. This is about the last place you can look for a birdie. Finish from here on out, it's pretty stout. Yeah, this one in 17, and but this is a birdie opportunity, even from this lie with a square groove wedge. She needs to get up a little. It's the top of the bunker and comes back in. I thought that was right yeah. on it. I'm not sure that was the right club again. Over at 15, moment ago, tee shot. Paula Creamer at plus six. Four holes left for her to try to make a move here. Tough hole location, front right. And that is a good shot, but uh, just barely misses out. A little bit like Pinehurst last week. Creamer is front. Creamer's settled down since the tough start. And Brittany Lang at plus four, waiting for the 18th green to clear before she comes up the hill. The biggest shot of her career so far. This was Morgan Pressel a moment ago at 13, third. Certainly a better leave here than in in the thick off the front. Good shot. Very nice shot. Chance to save par, remain at plus three, be within one of the leader, Birdie Kim, and there's that boundary fence that Birdie Kim is right up against. And David Fay, as we bring you in, no relief here. No relief, it's not considered an obstruction under the rules. It's, uh, Johnny called it a tough luck fence. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is when you get a, a boundary fence, no relief. Just don't hit it there. This is a shot you just don't want to get greedy on because she could nick the fence coming down and whiff it. Uh, she's trying to get pretty close to that fence. You want to at least stay six inches away from it on your backswing and downswing. Huge amount of thick rough between. You see this move the way she's trying to do that? Huge amount of thick rough between there and the fairway. This is no bargain. Really, really good shot. It was actually a pretty cool little swing. She takes it back way inside. See how she cocks her wrist to the inside and then comes and hoods it at the bottom to play a little trapping sort of punch draw. Huge shot for Brittany Lang coming up the hill here at 18. And she had to wait. It's almost like having a timeout called before you shoot a key winning free throw. Iced at the open. She's certainly seen a few of those that, uh, as a part of the Cameron Crazies. You can see she's trying to reline her feet there. Like I said, she's, oh, did she block it right? Same shot that uh, Golbus hit, yep. almost identical shot. That's what happens under pressure is you just don't release your putter, you don't release your right side on the full swings, you lock up, leave the face open. That's too, a shame, another Great opportunity, both Golbus uh, Lang both hit great drives. It's in the bunker. First women's open for Brittany Lang. And now Pressel for par over at 13. Bunker save. How close was that? Pressel's first bogey since that string of three in a row in the middle of the front nine. Falls to plus four. This a moment ago. Creamer at 15. Not much break. Hit it short. Hit the second to there and saves it. So Creamer with three holes left. 
four behind. And back over at 14, Birdie Kim, third upcoming, Jane. Well, she now has 136 yards downhill with a little bit of wind helping her. That was an incredible shot, guys. I didn't think she could move it more than about 20, 30 yards, and uh, now she's on the left side of the fairway with a perfect look down at this hole. It's the most beautiful spot on the golf course right here. Just a magnificent approach shot, uh, probably in the top 20 coolest second shots in all of golf as far as just look. It's just gorgeous down there, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful out here, and I talked to her caddy, Miles, uh, as she was coming up, and he said, you know, she's a special player. Her coach is Bob Toskey, and Bob is very impressed with this young lady. She just seems very cool, calm, and collected, like no big deal. Another golf tournament. Well, as old saying, looks could be deceiving, but so far so good. But uh, probably going to make bogey here, so uh, it's only been a one-shot difference between uh, Lang and Pressel if she bogeys here. Uh, this looks like a pitching wedge. As I said, downhill, slightly downwind. There is Creek left, not that she would hit one that far left, looking out to the right. Looking about 20 feet right of the hole. Lead in a moment might be plus three. And here is Brittany Lang from that bunker that Golbus was in. Golbus nearly saved the par. Beautiful, nice, clean lie. Sideboards to the right, breaks left. Sounds good. Pops it up. Sounds real good. Looks great. Player never been in that position before. That is hugely well done. I'll say it just leaves yourself maybe a right edge putt, a very easy putt. Laying that far away from posting plus four and the lead in the clubhouse. She was seven shots back after she bogeyed the sixth hole to fall to plus eight. Now just two behind and Kim has a long par putt at 14, remember. Boy, won the ACC, ACC uh, last couple of years and She's a heck of a player, but she never had a putt like this in her life. Here's another amateur in the hunt here. Morgan Pressel off the tee at a 433 yard par four 14th. Got to hit this fairway, Roger. Yeah, I really need to hit this fairway, John. Sort of a semi blind shot. You can just barely see the top of it. This ball drawing back toward the right center of the fairway. This is good. Got a lot of chase in that shot, Roger. Must have gotten 40 yards of roll. To 17. Candy Kung's third here at the par five. She's at plus six. Back at the 50th yeah. hole, Young Joe right. made a bogey. So moves her to six over. And Candy Kung a long way from the hole for birdie at 17. This U.S. Women's Open being brought to you by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy for everything else. There's MasterCard by Lincoln Financial Group, providing powerful financial resources to help you say, hello, future. And by ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader. We go over to the 14th and a long par try for Birdie Kim. Talk about coming out of nowhere. This is just her 34th LPGA start. Has one top 10. Tied for seventh last month in Atlanta. This is not a fast putt. It breaks left all the way. It's not the kind of putt you really can expect to make. She went up to the right, Dottie. That's a pretty strange little putt there, breaking towards the back. Yeah, that was a misread on both our behalf. Yeah, I would have never. I, that must be in a little tricky spot there because everything else breaks left on that green. So the lead is going to drop to at least plus three. Lang's at 18 at plus four with a makeable par putt. Well, all in all, a five after the drive, it could have been out of bounds. 
there is Lang. 18, it seemed like eternity for Brittany Lang from McKinney, Texas. Look at those two A's on the board. Lang and Pressel both trying to become the youngest winner in the history of this championship. Pressel trying to become the youngest winner in the history of major championship golf. The teenagers have arrived. Well, Brittany Lang said she put off turning professional because she needed a little more experience. I think this might do it. Well, she's got a putt here that I'm not sure, uh, just an inch or two, it could be dead straight, this putt here. And then again, it could be right edge. And it's hard to tell from the TV booth, but it's really close to being a straight in putt where her putter head is is definitely straight. So she could over could o could overread this. I'll tell you, you just have no idea, folks, what it feels like to have a putt like this for possibly a win. And she knows it. It's just so hard to uh, make a good good stroke. It's hard to keep the putter still. Yeah. My hands used to get clammy. Yeah, yeah. And you just kind of had to get the shake quieted down so you could take it back. We'll see if she, see if she can read it right and make a great par save out of the bunker. Kim tapped in for bogey. The lead is plus three. It's looking out to the right a little bit. That's a putt. It was dead straight, Dottie. It looks like it breaks left. May have snuck in with just a hair less speed, but Same still putt. pretty well solid. Golbus struck. hit a great putt just to the left of that, and, and she overread it also. So that uh, read there is a uh, cost to uh, wannabe, so to speak, and not that she's out of it. So the lead is Langs plus five. Great round. In the clubhouse. Over to 14, Morgan Pressel. That's from 168 yards. Sets up great for her, doesn't it, Roger? It does. She likes to play that draw, and she's got this one drawing just right of the hole. Help! That is unlucky. That ball carries a yard, and it's a pretty good shot. Well, it almost looks like she's misclubbed um, about the whole back nine, Roger. 17. Lengthy birdie putt down the hill for Candy Kung. Aiming well left. Andy's coming off a top 10 last week in Rochester, really starting to play better. Oh, wow. That's going to make it pretty tough. Yep. Too much break, too much speed. Three-time winner on the LPGA Tour, all of those coming in 2003. We go back to 14. Where Stubbles is next. 153 of the hole. This is in a place you got to attack the pin, John, from now on, huh? Yeah, especially on that great drive. As a look, hit this ball very, very high. It's a pretty good looking shot if it gets down. It does not. These players have literally almost missed club every single hole in the back nine, the two of them. Stubbles staring down. I don't think she's going to like what she sees in the deep rough. And at this par 315th, 183 yards. Birdie Kim, another bogey, slips to plus three, still Hanging on to the lead by one. Well, Dan, there's not much wind at all to speak of right now. Hole today located only six on and five from the right. Uh, the best shot is about 15 feet left of the hole, hopefully hitting it a uh, hole high. It leaves yourself a straight putt. It calls for a high fade, but not many of the players uh, this week hit high fades. Straight ball is good, too, though. Hook is a tough shot. Bench and she's just trying to hit it in the middle of every green. Pretty smart play coming in from there. There's that false front. Got another another shot. Just like Paula Kramer. Persevering at Cherry Hills in the 60th U.S. Women's Open. And while we were away, this was Candy Kong's par putt at 17. Back up the hill. And nicely done, so Kung still there, plus six. She could somehow birdie 18. We go back to 14. Just on the edge there, Morgan Pressel looking over this birdie try, Roger. And it's a putt that's really kind of hard to read. It's, uh, 
it, it's it's almost um, over a bit of a crown it looks like uh, putting from this angle it uh, shouldn't do much but it may move a little right in the area of the cup going through her usual putting routine she helps says it keeps her shoulders in square and she can see the line better just not getting it there well the line wasn't the problem obviously Russell turned 17 just a month ago. And over at 15, Birdie Kim came up short. Second to this par three now, delicate little chip. It certainly is the green surface, about three or four feet above where she is now. She could putt this, right? She could, but uh, she's opting for a sand wedge. Looks like her lob wedge. Just kind of brush that grass. Very smooth uh, practice swings. But that'll test you from there for certain. Let's go to 16. This just a moment ago. Par putt for Paula Creamer coming down the hill. Drove it in the left rough. Forced to lay up. And that one will not break enough. She would go on to make her bogey and drop to plus seven. Playing alongside Young Joe made a par. She remains at plus six. And we'll join Kay Cockrell. I'm here with Brittany Lang, who is the leader in the clubhouse right now in your very first U.S. Open. What can this possibly possibly be like for you right now? Uh, it's a great feeling. I, I hung tough out there and was patient. I didn't get off to the best of starts, but uh, I finished real strong. And it feels great. How were you able to put this kind of week together, being that this is your first Open Championship? Um, I just I came out here just to have some fun, you know, play some golf. It's a great golf course, and I had a lot of fun this week, and I think that's why I played so well. What kind of past experiences did you draw upon as you were out there, particularly on the back nine today? Um, the, the Curtis Cup, definitely. There was a lot of big crowds out there. And then um, our national NCAA championship, uh, just getting used to all the fans. It was a lot of fun. Can you describe what it was like in this final round of your first U.S. Open, and in particular, what was going through your head on the back nine? Um, I didn't look at a scoreboard the whole day. I looked up and saw that my name was on the leaderboard. That's all I needed to know. So I knew I was somewhere back in it, but I didn't look at any numbers. And uh, I think that helped me. And I just, I played very solid coming in. All right, congr congratulations. 19-year-old from McKinney, Texas. Let's go out to 14. Pressel for par. Got it. You, she studied the scoreboard all the way down yeah. to this green. Yeah, in sharp, sharp contrast to Lang, Pressel is a scoreboard watcher and one to look at right now. Four holes left for her. One back. It's for par now at 15. Birdie Kim. And after a pretty nice little sandwich chip to this point below the hole, about four feet. Part of that South Korean pipeline here to the United States. So many players. The one that comes to mind, obviously, Seri Park, former champion in this event, Dottie. But they have come over in droves, and they can play. Very, very strong Korean amateur program, and this turning out players in bunches. Second year for Birdie Kim on the LPGA Tour. Won the Korean Junior Championship in the late 90s. Won a total of 19 amateur events in Korea after starting to play this game at the age of 11. Well, I think the number right now is four over. Plus four will probably win this championship without a playoff. Um, that means uh, Birdie King, uh, Kim could play one over. But the thing is, you got you don't want to go into 18 needing a par because, as you've seen, uh, you just don't make pars on 18. Everybody's made worse than par, just about that we've seen so far on this telecast. So uh, Pressel needs to maybe somehow Make a couple of pars, birdie 17 and bogey 18, and she could win. At 16 T, birdie Kim, awkward tee shot here. Their way slopes severely from the players left to right. Hold dog legs that way. It's a great hole, isn't it, Gary? Yes, it is. Easy to miss the fairway left here. Wind helping just a whisker from behind the players too, Gary. Mr. Fairway would. 
watching it pretty anxiously. And the rotten rock. Oh. And now a little dry creek will come into play. She'll have to make a decision as we go to 15. And there is Morgan Pressel, one back at Kim. Four in here. That's certainly plenty of club for her, Roger. Well, this is just right at the flag stick. That's been the pattern. Morgan Pressel yelling sit as the ball drifts back, but not bad, not in the thick rough. Lang is the leader in the clubhouse, 19-year-old amateur, Morgan Pressel, one better at the age of 17. Morgan Pressel, who will be a high school senior at the St. Andrews School in the fall in Florida from day one here at Cherry Hills, has had one goal in mind, a fearless 17-year-old who feels her time has come. should be intimidated. I mean, I've played good golf up to here. You know, it's I, I've played well enough to play my way into the last group, and if I'm leading the tournament, then why not go ahead and try and win it? Why should I be intimidated by anything else? Pressel exudes the confidence of a golfer who's been there before, and she has as the youngest player to ever qualify in this championship four years ago at the age of 12. But after a first round 77 at Pine Needles, the young Pressel showed the same emotions that make up her will to succeed today. No, I didn't play too well. Um, I didn't hit the ball well. And I just want to play well tomorrow. She would go on to miss the cut in her first open. Two years later, at Pumpkin Ridge, she made it to the weekend before finishing 52nd. Now, after another two years, she would like to save those tears for a victory and a championship unparalleled in her sport. It is the biggest, tur the biggest tournament in women's golf, and to be on top of this event is, is at my age, is a pretty big thing. Morgan Pressel, her uncle is Aaron Crickstein. Remember him, the former tennis star who at the age of 16 in 1983 upset Vetus Carolitis in the third round of the 83 U.S. Tennis Open. In fact, that was Morgan's first love, tennis, before she dove into this sport of golf. And uh, the man that has been so inspirational to her, her grandfather, Herb Crickstein, who has been here all week long. He's the man that really got her going in the game. And now faced with this from behind, 15, with her second to the par three. Yeah, this is a chip shot from about 65 feet from the hole. And we'll move to her right in the area of the cup. Not a lot of break around the hole here, Roger. Stop. Easy. Another one that went off in her hands, similar to what we saw early in the round. You know, she had a save at 10 from over the green. Uh, well, let's take a look at this technique, Dottie. You see anything there? Nothing there, nothing, nothing. Just a little too yep. much of it. Yeah, it looked perfect form. Kept the hit left hand going, no cup. Uh, just a little bit too hard, like you said. And while Morgan Pressel was hitting, this was Bertie Kim forced to lay up short of the creek. She'll have a third shot of uh, somewhere around 130 yards. Well, the rough here has cost the players almost three quarters of a shot. I'll tell you, Brittany Lang is back in the clubhouse thinking, well, I should have already 18, but well, maybe I don't need to make, I mean, par 18, but. Uh... Second for Candy Kong here at 18. Remember, the lead in the clubhouse, Lang's plus five. So a birdie here to try to match it. There's the best shot we've seen all day. And Kong's going to have a chance. By far the best shot we've seen. That was high, too. That came down softly. Kong, a part of last year's championship, tied for fifth. And back at 16, Birdie Kim getting ready for her third. 109 yards to the front Gary hole located today on 24 in the back left corner. She has a sideboard, she can bring it in from right to left. Big 
Big swing with that short iron, long back swing, full follow through. Must have been trying to hit a hard wedge. It comes up well short. Brittany Lang signing some autographs. I think that uh, autograph might be worth something here very shortly, Gary. <laughs> Good chance of it as we go back to 15. And Pressel for par. A hard putt, pretty dead straight. Clutch by Russell. That's two of those. Knocked it in from off the green at 10 for par. And same thing here. Pretty gutsy, huh, Dottie? That's amazing. She is terrific. <laughs> we talked about it all week, Johnny, how Oregon Prussell reminds us a little bit of Dottie. I mean, you know how she's playing. Yeah. Just look at her face. Look at her mannerisms. Well, she's number one in putting this week. Only 21 putts uh, through 15 holes today. And she's just hit five greens in regulation. Morgan Prussell on the threshold of major championship history. At the 16th, lengthy par putt for the leader, Birdie Kim. Should be turning to her left as it gets near the hole. Well, not in yet. And back on the tee, Morgan Pressel. Pretty narrow drive, Gary. Oh, she's asking for it to kick right, and she gets it. There it goes. So safely on the left side of the fairway, it will leave a lie where the ball will be well below her feet. We go ahead to 18. And here's Candy Kong to the post plus five. Time for the lead in the clubhouse. That similar line that we've seen over red all day. This one's not hit though, it's no. red. But gee, so gotta get it to the hole when you have a chance to get in a playoff for the US Open. Kong officially out of it. Lang's lead safe in the clubhouse. Only three birdies at 18 all week long. 73 for Kung. Part every hole on the back nine. Plus six. And as Morgan Pressel makes her way up, her dad, uh, Michael, is at a junior golf tournament in Florida with uh, Morgan's uh, younger sister, Madison Dotty. So well, the only two people here are her grandparents, so uh, <laughs> she's been staying with them all week here. Well, she has, and she managed to get herself scolded yesterday morning. Her grandmother, Evelyn, found her at 7 a.m. hiding in the bathroom with the lights on and reading. She couldn't sleep. <laughs> said, Morgan, you have to go back to sleep. Banished to the bathroom from well, her by her a lot of feisty adrenaline. grandmother. You know, she's, it's amazing to me because she says, hey, the money's not an issue. Obviously, she can't win any money. So she says, why should I worry about trying to finish second or third? I'm here to win this thing. 16 for bogey, Gary. Well, that now drops her back to plus four. So Morgan Pressel and Birdie Kim tied for the lead. Well, the nice thing for Morgan, she likes to watch the leaderboards, so she's going to have a chance to play those last couple holes knowing exactly what she needs to do, and uh, that's what she likes. Well, she said she liked that pairing, especially being the last group, because yep. she knew exactly what she had to do. Yep, she's a type A type personality. She might be A plus, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah, well, A-plus in school. Did I get you? Okay. Brittany Lang just signing away, hoping that the plus five holds up. We want to make a scoring correction. Actually, Candy Kung made a bogey at the 18th, hit it in the rough. And so that putt was for par at 18, so she is at plus seven officially. And Kim and Pressel remain tied for the lead at plus four as this U.S. Women's Open is being brought to you by Ford, built for the road ahead. Also by Titleist, the number one ball in golf, and by Lincoln Financial Group, providing powerful financial resources to help you say, hello future. I think we're saying hello future right here in this Women's Open. Got to congratulate Michael Burke and all the crew, the grounds crew, and um, him being the superintendent. This course is perfect right now. 17 we go. Lengthy birdie putt for Young Joe. Fairly big swinger 
early in the putt, and then as we've mentioned before, it kind of flattens out around yeah, the hole. Yeah, and it's got a lot of speed. It's got a lot of speed. We've seen a number of players race it by. She had to give it a good run, though, Gary. Yeah, she did it. Plus six, John. Absolutely. It has to feel like she has to make uh, play one under the last two. To and back on the tee at the par five, 531 yards. Michelle Wee coming off uh, a birdie at 16. Talked to everybody I could talk to before the round, and everybody, uh, every person said they wanted Michelle Wee to win. Nobody else, uh, uh, not even Anamika. Well, her time will come, I'm sure, but uh, when you open with a seven over par 42, that is going to make it tough. She is plus 10 for the day. All right, big tee shot now for Bertie Kim. She missed the fairway at. Uh, 13, 14, and 16. Yeah, two wipes to the right and uh, one, one hook. Hole. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you don't want to hit in the right trees here, do you? Or left. <laughs> They're on both sides, and the rough is deep on both sides. And the wind is coming from left to right. Is this three metal? Yeah, here's so. Thought I heard her caddy say, there you go. Yeah, nicely done, down the center of the fairway. Back to the 16th. Morgan Pressel getting ready for her second. Roger. As you said, Gary, the ball well below her feet, also on a little bit of a downhill high. 150 yards to the hole, wind helping. I would think she'd have to land as what in the front third of the green. I would agree. This green has firmed up considerably in the last hour or so. It's a good hole location for a draw, Roger. Now she's working it at the center of the green. See if it'll come left. It should. It takes a good kick off that ridge. Underneath the hole, uphill birdie putt. So 17-year-old Morgan Pressel will have a birdie putt at the par 4 16th and a chance to take the lead when we come back. And while we were away, this was Young Joe putt for par at 17. Really to have any chance at all has to make this. Okay, nicely done playing along with Young Joe. Paula Creamer recorded a triple bogey eight. Moves her to 10 over par. And we move back to the fairway. And an important layup shot here. I'm going to go. I'm not going to go there. Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, you heard her caddy say what it is over the right hand bunker, and she said, I'm not going to go to the right. Sounds like she's trying to set herself up for a better Angle. location. Absolutely. Mm, to the front right hole location. She can't hit it down there too far where you don't have a full swing in. I think she has 185 to 100 yard layup. Well, that seems like that would be a good number, Jane. Uh -huh. That's perfect. Needs to stop. All right, that part of the job done. We go back to 16, where Morgan Pressel has a birdie putt, Roger, to take the outright lead. Well, she has again taken a long look at the leaderboard here in front and left of the green, and uh, it's almost as though she's trying to memorize it. She's there, had it so long. She knows what's in the clubhouse. She knows five is the benchmark right now. This is an easy putt, Roger. Oh, yeah, this is just a little slightly uphill and moving a little bit to her left. You're right, John. This is the kind of putt you would hope for in a situation like this. You don't have to think about anything but making this, huh, Gary? Yeah, I would agree. You don't have to worry about knocking it three or four feet by, that's for sure. Is it firm enough? Is it firm enough? Oh, she knows that was a really, really big opportunity for her. That slowed down fast, didn't it, Roger? Yeah. It did. It almost rocked backwards. I mean, that thing was going pretty good, and I just... Uh, well played hole. Yes, very well played. Well, you can see she wanted this one. Get the reaction right about now. I've got it. i got it. Oh, no. Morgan Pressel just off the mark with that one, but she's made a bunch here to stay in this championship. 
all the way back at the second. Again, Pressel, start of the day, part of a three-way tie for the lead. This was a birdie that would give her the lead in this championship at even par. And then Pressel here at the seventh. This coming after three straight bogeys, so that was a huge par save. And then at 10, another one you talked about. Johnny, this saving it at the par four. Nice. And then uh, at 14, another par save. This coming after a bogey at 13. And then at 15, to stay at plus four. 22 putts now through the first 16 holes. Six one-putt greens. And Morgan Pressel is in position. Dan, she's had two straight days of this. She made a bunch of seven, eight, nine footers yesterday. She said she really didn't want to leave herself in that sort of position, but boy, she sure has managed to deliver. Well, she's had to deal with tougher things. In uh, uh, September of 2003, she lost her mother, Kathy, to breast, breast cancer, and that probably puts things in perspective. That's a tough thing for a young teenager to have to go through, I would imagine. Well, she's got such a great support group, though, at home with her, her grandmother and grandfather, and obviously her sister and her dad. Just a terrific family. Her mother, very, very competitive. She told me last night that that's a lot where she gets her competitive edge. Her mom, the 78 Big Ten tennis champion. That's what Morgan wanted to play when she began uh, searching through the various sports and then kind of fell into golf thanks to the persuasion of her grandfather, Herb. Got to hit this fairway, though. This hole gets tough in a hurry if you miss the fairway. She's hit 10 of 12 so far, make it 11 of 13. Got a little steam on it, doesn't it, Gary? Uh, no hesitation in that swing. No guiding it, that's for sure. And we move up ahead. Bertie Kim getting ready for her third shot. Gary, she has 81 yards to the front, 88 to the flag. Wind is helping a little bit, and from the left, her gap wedge normally goes 85 yards, so she's got to be gripping down on this just ever so slightly to account for the altitude. Yeah, altitude uh, is 10%, so got to factor that in. I think sometimes it's harder to control the wedges than it is the regular full shots with that 10%. Yeah. It takes away some of your feel. Well, the wind is freshening a little bit out here, Dottie. It's tough with it being downwind on the, with the lake that close. That is a tough combination. It's very hard to get a good amount of spin on it when the wind's behind you. Trying to bring it in from left to right. Gets a big bounce, spins a little bit. Nicely played shot. So Birdie Kim will have a birdie putt at the 17th and a chance to take the lead when we return. This is while we were away from more than 200 yards. The second at the 18th for Young Joe trying to get in that plus five number, which leads in the clubhouse. Tough shot. That thing was shin high above her feet. Uh, and it's just, and with the wood, the opening is 30 feet wide, uphill by 60 feet. This 18th hole is brutal. So Young Joe just about officially out of it. Over to Birdie Kim at 17. With a chance to take the outright lead, and this is hard to believe for a young lady who has only made, had one top 10 finish, only made nine cuts in 33 LPGA Tour starts. Well, this putt downhill, Gary, about 25 feet. It's pretty flat around the hole. I don't think it's going to do a lot. Yeah, the tendency has been to overread it. She's looking right at the hole, Gary, yeah, not she looking is. left. And it just won't break. It just won't break. Good speed. Good putt. Yeah, it was a very well struck putt. That was probably right where she was looking. She Spectating. looked like she was looking right at it, but she, her putter blade was left. <laughs> How about Morgan Pressel? Well, she said she looks at those leaderboards. Um, this is the price for it. She knows what's going on. It is one KG 17-year-old right there. Here's young Joe, whose second shot landed in a thick rough here at 18. Needs to hold this out. 
to match Lang's plus five score. Johnny, you looked at this earlier today. Uh, this shot here? Yeah. This is not pretty dead. This is a tough shot here because if she's got to almost bounce it into the fringe, otherwise it's going to go way long with no spin. So it's pretty tough to get inside a 10 feet from here. Maybe one and three you get inside 10 feet. This is thick stuff. This has not been touched. No divots over there. Just thick. There's nothing like bluegrass in Denver. You want to play out of tough stuff, try that. Come here to Denver and try this stuff. They can grow grass here thick. Look at that thing kick left, but she played for it. Might hit the pin. She needed that to hit the pin. Very, very good shot from there regardless. Yeah, she gave it a great try. Best she can post is plus six. And so that kind of makes it a birdie Kim Morgan Pressel duel on the course. Brittany Lang in at plus five. 17. Pressel second. At the par five, just trying to lay up into position. For it to run out a little bit, it does. Now up the green, Birdie Kim for her par to remain at four over. All right. Confidently hold. And she'll take that short walk only about 50 yards to the 18th tee. I mean, you got to give her a lot of credit, Gary. She's done nothing to warrant being in this position. You know, if, if there was a betting going on, she'd have been about 500 to one odds to win this thing. Again, one top 10 on the LPGA Tour and 30 plus career starts. Heads over to this 18th. We've seen some damage at 18. A long time ago, Lorena Ochoa came to this hole at plus three. And she hit this ball in case you just tuned in two inches fat and pulled it. She was one off the lead at this point and then Brittany Lang for her par that was to post plus four so Ochoa really fell back at plus seven and Lang is at plus five so par has been uh, scarce not only through the week of this championship but especially on this final pressurized Sunday here toughest green to hit easiest fairway to hit I think it's the toughest hole in women's U.S. Open history or recently. Par five for the members here at Cherry Hills, but a par four here in this championship week. Michelle Wee with the honor will play first here. And if you just joined us and we're wondering what has happened to Michelle Wee, the 15 year old amateur playing in the second to last group was a part of the three way tie for the lead with Morgan Pressel and Karen Stupples but began her day with a double bogey and just has never recovered. I'll tell you what happens in those first couple holes when you're young and inexperienced and got, have the lead, a share of the lead, it sort of sets up the whole round and it's a shame because she was the gallery favorite along with Annika Sornstam. Vision for Birdie Kim to be able to follow a good tee shot, uh, Dottie. Well, no question. I think it's probably been pretty difficult for her today playing with a struggling Michelle Wee. I give her credit for hanging in there. Sometimes that's really, really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Wee at plus 10 and Kim at plus 2. But this hole will make you nervous if you're playing by yourself in the evening. That lake's sort of saying, don't duck cook it and don't block it in the right rough, even though it's a 40 yard wide fairway. Oh, she's taking her driver, Johnny. Wind is helping a little bit, but there's really not much of it out here now. She's hit some wipes to the right. Her swing, she has a tendency to cut across it at impact. And so we'll see if she can overcome that. Fairway for Birdie Kim, by the way, uh, young Joe, two putter for bogey, plus seven for the championship. Pressel's third at 17. 81 yards. All right. 
Brave shot, just carrying the water. Don't go anywhere. Plenty of action left here as we take you to our NBC studios in New York for the Lincoln Financial NBC Sports Report. As Morgan Pressel battles for this championship, we told you that her mother lost her battle with breast cancer in September of 2003, and this was Morgan Pressel telling us last night about those traits she inherited from her late mom. Um, well, a lot of things. Uh, you know, she's, she was always big into telling me to try 100%, 150%, 200% on everything, and just, and you know, if you, if you say you don't make a putt on this hole, go to the next hole, you're going to make another putt, you know, just, um, and you know, she's, she was so competitive, and I think that's one of the biggest things that I take from her is my competitive spirit, because I, I'm really competitive out on the course, so. You could uh, definitely feel and see the emotion in her voice as she talked about her late mom, dad out in Florida, and her grandparents here watching this, 17. A lengthy birdie putt for Karen Stupples. One that has been overread to the left almost by every player. That was kind of a last ditch hope for her. Plus seven. She had a good chance being the reigning British Open champion. She really had the most experience among all, all the leaders, huh, Gary? Yes, yeah, she did, John. No question about that. It uh, just all kind of came apart, especially her. She only hit uh, seven greens out of 17, so. Iron play, definitely not good. I think Morgan Pressel, she looks at Birdie Kim and says, I can dust you. I'm 17, but I can dust you. She said she could dust the field at the beginning of the week. That's how, that's how she's been all week. Well, Roger, this is a putt she's got to be a little careful with. Yes, it's slightly downhill, and it looks like it has to drip a little bit to the right. Just slightly. Look at this. Oh my goodness. What a beautiful putt. That Gave was. her a chance, left herself with nothing coming back. Pace was perfect. It actually went left in the middle of the putt, Gary. Yeah. And very, very difficult to read. Kind All of right. appropriate how it comes down to 18, isn't it? Well, uh, I thought at the beginning of this week that it would come to the 18th hole and somebody either make a birdie or a bogey or something will happen. That beast of a par four. Well, here's the most important shot. Uh, Birdie Kim has ever hit, I can tell you that. We've had two players, Gulbis and Lang, both block it in the right bunker within a foot of each other, and both of them make bogey, uh, both with chances to maybe post a number. Well, Johnny, she has 186 to the front, 193 to the flag. Uphill, what wind there is is slightly in her face and from the left. This is a seven wood. This is headed out to the right. And in that bunker, I'm telling you believe you, that? Those three balls are within a foot. All three players that had a chance to post a number have hit it within a foot of each other. And they've hit good bunker shots and just haven't been able well, to it's a trick putt top it, it off. For that hole location, if you hit it underneath the hole left, it just doesn't break. Well, I think, too, they are guarding me against going the left bunker, which is no chance. It's a hard shot. You got the ball above your feet on 18, uh, five, six inches, and it's hard to hit a good shot. See if Michelle can hit a good one. 163. Stay left. Sounded a little thin. There's nothing harder in golf to have a level lie, a pretty level lie to a, a green that's 60 feet above you or 50 feet above you. It's just easy to block it. Brittany Lang watching in the clubhouse, wondering if plus five is going to make it. Birdie Kim in that bunker, and Pressel, you just saw arrive at the tee at 18. And Morgan getting ready to hit her shot here. She's hit a couple of low bullets here during the week over this uh, 18th water. Oh. Well, that sets up perfectly for her little low draw. You got 40 yards of fairway that you hit down the right side with a going hook. She's going with the driver. Well, that low bullet she hit earlier this week nearly only cleared that water by about two steps, but it left her in perfect position. She 
hit it as hard as she could, Dottie. She just ripped that one. That's the farther you get it down there, the easier this hole gets. You see the side slope on this fairway. It's got a huge right to the left slope. Leaves herself a good angle for her draw. Her little draw, she can just scoot it between the bunkers, one hop it on there. She's got a chance. She's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Safely across. Up ahead. Ready, Kim in the bunker. Only two players have won the Women's Open in their very first try. Patty Berg in 1947, Kathy Cornelius in 1956. So, so much history with Morgan Pressel, but history as well with this 23-year-old from South Korea. Well, we might not see this again in our lifetime where you have uh, in the top three players, uh, you got two amateurs. You just don't see that, Dottie. It's amazing. No, you don't, but I think it's really neat that Amateur golf has been so big a part of Cherry Hill's history. You know, Jack Nicholas finishing second here in the open as an amateur and 60 to Arnold. There's Bertie Kim's lie on the right. Michelle Wee to play first here to the left. They both have good lies. But Michelle needs to land it just on top of this uh, right hand plateau and let it feed down to the hole. Everybody's been leaving this sand shot short. And it's into the wind too, John. touch right there. And I'm sure Michelle Wee is going to hear the murmurs that she hasn't uh, played the junior circuit much at all and hasn't uh, won a lot and didn't close the deal today. But uh, I don't know, guys. She's just been impressive to watch outside of this day, outside of this Sunday. It was pretty exciting to think a 15-year-old might win the biggest women's championship in golf. She told uh, her caddy told me walking up the hole that uh, she'd like to have this on TiVo so she could rewind it and start again. Well, it's the most important shot of her life right here. Uh, what Birdie Kim needs is a uh, par Kim. Birdie would be nice too. Well, this player's only gotten it up and down out of a bunker six of 27 times all year. Not exactly a strong stat. He's aiming out to the right quite a ways. Looking way over in here. Did she get it there? So they hit a scooter. It might be good. Look at this. How about a birdie kill? Are you kidding me? Look at this. Wow. Talk about great moments in USGA history. My goodness. Morgan Pressel just got robbed. Birdie for Birdie at 18. That is just like a Larry Mize at the Masters right there. Just a no-brainer. Changed her name to Birdie Kim just in time to perhaps win the biggest championship in women's golf. So that's going to force Pressel to Birdie behind her. Another look. It came out really low. It was not a pretty bunker shot, but it, it came out real low. A scooter runner. And what a shot. Just a total, maybe destiny shot. I don't know. Only the fourth birdie at 18, the entire championship. And Morgan Pressel goes back to her caddy and says, can you believe that? I can't believe she just made that. That's a... Bob Tway against Greg Norman at the PGA at Inverness. So Lang watches Kim at plus three. That's <laughs> just one of the great all-timers at a major championship right there. 72nd hole. And her name's Birdie. <laughs> it all goes together. Tip of the hat. Great galleries here, though. They appreciate that shot. Record galleries here. It's been incredible from the very first practice round this week. And Michelle Wee's thinking, you, that's amazing. We missed her par putt, 82, her second highest round ever on the LPGA Tour, but the leaderboard watcher knows what she has to do here. Stupples to play first here, Roger. 194 left to the hole for Stupples. Ball well above her feet here. 
It's really hard to get this ball to stop, Johnny, when it comes slinging in here. Do you believe Kim made that bugger shot right? No, I can't, and neither can Morgan Pressel. I turned back and, to look for her reaction, and all she did was look down and shake her head back and forth. Well, you never know. To birdie this hole is almost a miracle. It's a pretty good looking shot if it's up. Get up, get up, come on. No. Just sort of like a, most every hole of the back nine, just these gals have uh, missed club just a little bit. That was a good swing. Only one can catch Birdie Kim. Well, she said she wanted to know what the deal was when she came to the last hole. Here's the deal. Birdie to tie. Just to hit the green is about one and three, Roger. Yeah, she might want to reshuffle right now, Dottie. 179. Got to hit short. Let's sort of hit a low scooter in there. And she's hit it very low at the Ryan. center of the green, trying to chase it up. Oh. No, no. Oh, a little unlucky. Another foot left that might have scooted in there. A little unlucky there, part. A little unlucky. We'll get it up now. Caddy Sammy wants her to get it up and down. How about the end? Well, you heard her say up and down doesn't matter. She knows the deal. Yeah, she's not playing for second there. Caddy Sammy thinks she's playing for second, but. Not there's a bad line. line. Not, not down on the bottom of it, but. As there's no, the trouble is with the shot, there's no real landing area. It's like, it's not like, well, you gotta, you almost have to hit it, bump it into the first cut of rough and then hop it on and run it in. You can't land it on the green, I don't think, from that line. Again, this championship on Thursday, birdie five of the first eight holes, announced her arrival immediately in her third Women's Open, came back down to earth to even, and has stayed right there near the lead the whole week. Well, she doesn't make this pitch shot. She just got beat by a miracle. I mean, the most unlikely person to make a miracle. At the start of the day, there probably weren't five people rolling for birdie. Kim, nothing wrong with her. It's just that she just wasn't on anybody's uh, sort of headlines to do anything. And she didn't have ever done anything that you would think that she would do anything. Figured she'd probably shoot 75 and that'd be the end of it. You no, know, we thought Michael Campbell was a bit of a dark horse coming out of Sunday last week. And this makes Michael Campbell look completely predictable. And Birdie Kim didn't have a three-putt green the entire championship and shot a 72, and that is some really good play in there. Roger, are you right there with that lie? Well, I got a peek at it, John. It's not too bad, but, uh, you know, what are the odds of chipping it in? I guess it's possible. It's not the kind of chip you even think about making, you know, is it, Roger? I mean, there's no real good-looking landing area. Well, that's all she could be thinking about now, but not normally. No, you wouldn't be thinking of holding this at all. Well, we just saw a miracle shot. Is there possibly two miracles within 20 minutes? Well, she won't go down without trying, that's for sure. And as she said earlier this week, second, third, doesn't matter. I'm here to win the tournament. It'll, she'll give it a chance. Well, she's got such experience in these USGA championships. She told me last night that it would be something that she pulls on. You know, just for this one hole and maybe number nine, it would have been good to carry a nine or 11 wood. Do you know that? Well, she does have an 11 wood. Yeah, I would have thought she might have used it on that uphill shot there. It's tough to hit an iron uh, on that flat uh, to this raised green, but here we go, Raj. You can hear how thick that grass is. Much to ask with the 72nd hole. And with the winner is Kay Cockrell. I sure am. Congratulations. You, you have just won the women's amateur or women's open championship. Yeah. 
still I can be alive now and I'm very happy. Just only I can tell. Can you believe that you finished with such a dramatic shot? Tell us how you were able to hold out that bunker shot at 18. No, really, I don't think I'll make. I just tried to get close. If I tried my best, make par, maybe I can. If make bogey, still, I have chance. I just only think, try to par, to get close to hole. But I never think about uh, those balls going in the hole. It's amazing. Well, it did, so and you've fun, just yeah. won the 60th Women's Open Championship. Congratulations, Stan. Thank you very Stan. much. Thank you. Nikki K changed her name last fall to distinguish herself from uh, the rest of the Kims, uh, the most common name out there in South Korea. Seven Kims began in this field. I would say that she's distinguished Birdie Kim in an unbelievable way this week at Cherry Hills. It's going to be a birdie on a USGA Championship trophy, Birdie Kim. Well, just so tough for Morgan because um, I think she thought she was in the driver's seat. Uh, Rogers, just after going into this hole, uh, even with Kim, probably figured, hey, Kim's going to bogey. She's in the right bunker. I'm going to make par, and I'm going to win this thing. I think that's what she's going to ask herself when this is all over is, how did I lose this thing? This I for think so she believed she was going to win it all the way. Yeah, Roger, this for solo second for Morgan. She didn't lose this championship. So breaking slider downhill, it's right of the hole. And instead, it'll be a couple of amateurs who tie for second at plus five. 17-year-old Morgan Russell and 19-year-old Brittany Lang come up short to Birdie Kim. Let's go back down to Kay. All right, one of the other big stories was Michelle Wee. Michelle, um, you had a chance to win this championship. You put yourself in a position. You got off to a tough start. What? Why did you get off to such a tough start, do you think, today? Um, well, you know, just realized that next time when I go and have to get my little ball of GPS system, it was lost out there. I was confused, and never from the get-go, just it was a little, you know. I mean, not a little. It was a lot. Um, just going to get things going. All right, well, sorry you didn't have the day you wanted. You sure provide a lot of drama anyway. Let's go back out to 18. Karen Stupples finishing up for her par. Tough, tough uh, finish for her. She was in great position about two hours ago. It looked like she might win this uh, with her experience uh, being the reigning British Open champion. And uh, you can see it's all probably coming out for uh, Morgan Pressel right now. I just can't believe it. Well, she should hold her head up high. She played fantastic golf. A little bit of the same feel from the leaders this week that it was at Pinehurst last week. Stuffles, Pressel, and Wee, the three leaders coming into today, a combined 22 over par on the rounds. But it was Pressel who hung in there till the bitter end. So <laughs> it's all being realized now by Birdie Kim. Follows in the footsteps of Seiri Pak. Third Korean to win an LPGA major. Seiri won this championship in 98. Black Wolf Run. Grace Park won Nabisco last year. One more look at the birdie by birdie at 18. One of the most memorable major championship history to win the Women's Open. Only birdie on 18 in two days. Came at a perfect time for the 23-year-old from South Korea. Lang comes up short along with Pressel. And you get the feeling there'll be some tears shed for Pressel, but she's got plenty of golf ahead of her, just 17 year old, years old and an amateur. Next time we meet in the summer of USGA Championships, the Senior Open, that begins Saturday, July 30th, right here on NBC. Coming up next, except on the West Coast, at your local news. Then tonight on NBC, beginning at 7, 6 Central, it's an all-new Dateline, followed by Law and Order, Criminal Intent, and Crossing Jordan. So for the entire NBC golf gang here, Johnny Miller, Dottie Pepper, Gary Koch, Roger Malpe, Kay Cockrell, Jane Crafter, and our entire crew here, which worked so hard all week long, Dan Hicks saying so long from Cherry Hills, where Birdie Kim is the champion with a birdie at the 72nd hole.